Are three cameras better than one? It's time to see how the Samsung Galaxy S10 compares to the Google Pixel 3. We know from our previous photo comparisons that the Pixel 3 has one of the best cameras found on a phone. Let's see if the S10 can stack up. Now the S10 has three cameras on the back, two 12 megapixel cameras, one is a telephoto and one is the regular wide angle, and then there's an ultra wide angle lens at 16 megapixels. The Pixel 3 on the other hand only has a single 12 megapixel camera around the back. Here's what that actually looks like, from telephoto, through to wide angle, through to ultra wide angle. And the regular wide angle lens on the S10 also has a variable dual aperture that switches between f1.5 and f2.4, just like last year's S9. Remember, the rear cameras are the same on the S10 and S10 Plus, and the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL, so results should be the same. For landscapes and everyday shots, photos from both phones look great. Colors are vibrant and images look tack sharp in good light. Both have HDR or high dynamic range modes, which I left on for most of these photos. The S10 also has a scene optimizer that recognizes 30 types of subjects like trees or sunsets and performs local tone mapping to optimize the image. It also offers suggestions to improve the composition when you're taking shots. On this one, it's telling me the most pleasing composition is going to be right here on the Buddha. I don't know, I, I would probably choose this configuration a little more. Overall, the color temperature on the S10 is a bit warmer than on the Pixel, especially on indoor shots if you have the scene optimizer turned on. Side by side, the S10 shots look a little more punchy than the Pixels, but to me, sometimes it can be a bit too much, especially if you're using the wide angle lens and you'll notice the saturation and HDR goes to the extreme. That being said, I really love the ultra wide angle lens on the S10 because it does make all the difference if you shoot a lot of landscapes or want to fit more in your photo. Like in this shot where the S10 can pull back wide enough to show you a lot more of the scene compared to the pixel. But there is a lot of distortion on the S10's widest lens. Just take a look at the pots in this photo to see how warped they are. Even so, I'd rather have the option of having that ultra wide angle lens than to shoot a panorama to get a wider perspective if I had the pixel. And for foodies, you'll love the S10's dedicated food mode. Just look at the difference in color saturation and the slight blur that makes your dishes pop. To get a similar effect on the pixel, you'll have to use portrait mode. So the S10 actually has a manual photo mode called Pro. You just swipe across in the camera interface and you find it right here. So you can adjust ISO, focus, white balance. The Pixel 3 doesn't give you any manual controls by default in this app, but you can toggle on to shoot in RAW, which I do appreciate. And the S10 also lets you do that too. For portraits, both phones let you adjust the blur in the background after the shot's been taken. It's called portrait mode on the Pixel and live focus on the S10. On the Galaxy, it uses both the super wide and wide angle lenses to get the effect, which is why portraits look a lot wider than on previous Galaxy phones like the S9. The default blur level is pretty subtle and sometimes I couldn't even tell if I'd used live focus to take the shot. The only way to make sure was if I went in to edit the photos and changed the background effect. Even then, the maximum level of blur that you can achieve with that slider isn't that intense. Each phone also lets you take portrait mode photos of non-human subjects like flowers. The Pixel identifies the subject, human or otherwise, a little bit better than the S10 and as a result, the blur looks more pronounced when you're using default settings. But for some portraits like this one, the S10 makes a much nicer image. You get more of the background with the wider lens, which can make all the difference, and the colors are more saturated. Now, selfies are always the most subjective, but I prefer the warmer tones from the S10. The Galaxy's selfie camera also has a beauty mode that's on by default, which smooths your skin tone, but of course, you can easily turn it off. But even without beauty mode, I think the S10's image is more flattering and even than the Pixel, which shows up every tiny detail. Now, you might like this look, but I definitely don't. The S10 also lets you save pictures as you see them, so they're not flipped. Super wide selfies on the Pixel are a nice touch if you want to fit more people in the frame. Okay, I'm recording some selfie video on the Pixel 3 and the Galaxy S10. 
Now the S10 is the only one that actually lets you record 4K video on the selfie camera while the Pixel 3 is just at 1080. For Zoom, Google uses Super Res Zoom to combine multiple photos to get a better looking shot. It's still digital zoom, but at 2x, it does a good job keeping up with the S10's optical zoom. When you push it to 10x, neither of the digital zooms look particularly great, but I think the Pixel 3 holds a little bit more detail. And when it comes to low light, there's no surprise the Pixel has a big advantage thanks to a feature called Night Sight. This mode brightens the scene and almost lets you see in the dark, bringing out details you'll miss on other phones. The S10 has a mode called Bright Night as part of the scene optimizer, but it activates automatically and I found it only kicked in when it was really, really dark. But on this bar shot, the S10's photo with enough light looks great and the warmer tones make it more appealing than the Pixel 3. In video, both have their pros and cons. Colors look nicely saturated on the S10 and detail is good on both, as long as you're filming in good light. But the S10 has a slightly sharper video image with better audio quality. The Pixel 3 has a great stabilization system that combines optical and electronic systems, and I prefer this effect to the super steady system on the S10. And remember, if you're shooting on the S10's widest lens, you don't get optical stabilization. Also, you only get tracking autofocus and video effects on the S10 when you're shooting in 1080 at 30 frames a second, not in 4K. In low light, the S10 wins easily. The image is so much clearer and sharper, retaining colors and more detail than the Pixel. Samsung also adds HDR10 Plus support on the S10, which boosts highlights and colors. But if you don't have a compatible device, then the only way to really appreciate this is to view it on the phone screen. Both take slow motion videos at 240 frames a second. They look good, but the S10 retains a bit more detail and sharpness at this frame rate than the Pixel. All right, I'm gonna try super slow-mo now. The S10 goes further with a super slow motion mode at 960 frames a second, except it only records for about two seconds in real time, it doesn't record sound, and instead you get some pretty cheesy music. Yeah, I don't dig that at all, but it looks neat. There's no doubt about it. Both these cameras are fantastic and it is hard to separate them. That ultra wide angle lens on the S10 is my favorite for landscapes. Video quality is great and the selfie camera is more flattering for my taste. But the Pixel 3 has better color accuracy and really detailed images, especially when you're looking at full magnification and night sight is second to none. So there you have it, the Google Pixel 3 and the Samsung Galaxy S10, both incredible cameras in different ways. I'd love to know which one you thought won this comparison. You can let me know, or if you have any questions about the cameras on either of these two phones, tweet me or leave me a comment.